Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to Supercomputing. We're here in Dallas, Texas, giving you live coverage with theCUBE. I'm joined by David Nicholson. Thank you for being my left arm today. Thank, thank you, Savannah. It's a nice little moral. Very excited about this segment. We've talked a lot about how the fusion between academia and the private sector is a big theme at this show. You can see multiple universities all over the show floor, as well as many of the biggest companies on Earth. We were very curious to learn a little bit more about this from people actually in the trenches, and we are lucky to be joined today by two Purdue students. We have Lucas and Carl. Thank you both so much for being here. One Purdue, one IU, I oh. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, then wait. Let's, sorry. Yeah. let's give Indiana University their fair ado. That's where Lucas is, yes. and Carl is at Purdue. Sorry, folks. I apparently need to go back to school to learn how to read. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, I know you're in the middle of a competition. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Carl, why don't you tell us what's going on? What is this competition? What brought you all here? And then let's dive into some deeper stuff. Yeah, this competition, so we're a joint team between Purdue and IU. We've come, overcome all rivalries, uh, you know, <laughs> age old rivalries to compete here at the competition. It's a multi-part competition where we're going head to head against other teams from all across the world, uh, benchmarking our supercomputing cluster that we, we designed. A, was there a, a moment of rift at all when you came together, or was everyone peaceful? Uh, we, we came together uh, actually pretty nicely. Our two advisors, they, you know, it, they were very encouraging, and so we overcame that. You know, no hostility, basically. Love, I love that. So, how what are you working on, and how long have you guys been collaborating on it? You can go ahead and start, Lucas. Um, so, we've been prepping for this uh, since the summer, uh, and some of us even before that. Um, wow. And so currently we're working on the application phase of the uh, competition. So everybody has different specialties and uh, basically the competition gives you a set of rules and you have to accomplish what they tell you to do in the uh, allotted time frame and run things very quickly. And so we saw, when, yeah. when we came and first met you, we saw that you were running, um, you, you, there, there are <laughs> lights and sirens mm -hmm. and a monitor looking at the power consumption involved. So part of this is how much power is being consumed. That's right. They explain exactly what are the what are the rules that you have so, to live within. Yeah. So the main constraint is you know the time as we mentioned and the power consumption. So uh, for the benchmarking phase, which was uh, the one two days ago, there was a hard cap of 3,000 watts uh, to be consumed. You couldn't go over that, otherwise you would be penalized for that. You have to rerun, uh, start from scratch, basically. Uh, now there's a dynamic one for the application section, where it's uh, it modulates uh, at random time, so we don't know when it's going to go down, when it's going to go back up. So we have to adapt to that in real time. Oh, oh, Dealing with a little bit of real world complexity, that's I guess right. that's probably yeah, yeah, what yeah. the Absolutely, simulation yeah. is here. I think that's pretty fascinating. I want to know, because I am going to just confess, when I was your age last week, I did not n understand the power of, of supercomputing and high performance computing. Lucas, let's start with you. How did you know this was the path you wanted to go down in your academic career? Yeah, what's, um, your, what's your background? Yeah, give us, give um, us the background. So my background is intelligent systems engineering, which is kind of a fusion. It's uh, between, I'm doing bioengineering and then also more classical computer engineering. So my background is biology, um, actually. But I decided to go down this path kind of on a whim. Uh, my professor suggested it, and I've kind of fallen in love with it. I did my summer internship doing HPC, and uh, I haven't looked back. So when did you when did you know you when did you think you wanted to go into this field? I mean, in high school, did you have a did you have a special teacher that sparked it? What was it? That's funny that you say that. What was it yes, in your background? I mean, in high school, um, towards the end, I was I just knew that uh, you know I saw this program at IU and it's pretty new, and I just thought this would be a great opportunity for me, and I'm loving it so far. Do yeah. you uh, family in tech, or is this a, is this a different path for you? Um, yeah, this is a different path for me. Um, but my family is so encouraging, and they're very happy for me. They text me all the time, so I you know I couldn't be happier. I just felt that in my heart. Uh, I know. I was going to say for the parent for the parents out there, get the tissue out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these guys they can't, they they don't understand, but. So Carl, Carl what, what, what's your story? Where, what's your background? My background, uh, I'm a major in unmanned aerial systems. So this is a drones, you know, commercial applications. Um, not immediately connected, as you might imagine, although there's actually more overlap than, uh, than one, might, one might think. So a lot of uh, unmanned systems today, uh, a lot of it's remote sensing, which means that there's a lot of image processing that takes place, you know, mapping of a field, what have you, or uh, some sort of uh, object like a silo. Uh, so a lot of it actually leverages high-performance computing in order to, to map, to visualize, uh, much re replacing you know, either manual mapping that used to be done by, by humans in the field, 
or a helicopter, so a lot of cost reduction there and efficiency increases. And when did you, and when did you get this spark that said, I want to go to Purdue? Did you come, now you, you mentioned off camera that you're from Belgium. That's right. Did you, did you come from Belgium to Purdue? Were yep. you already in the States? No, so um, I've, uh, I have family that lives in the States, but I grew up in Belgium. Okay. Uh, I knew I wanted to study in the States, you know. But, but at, what age, at what age did you think that science and technology was something you'd be interested in? Well, I've always loved computers from a young age. I was, uh, I've been breaking computers since uh, before <laughs> I can remember, <laughs> much to my parents' dismay. But um, yeah, so I've always, I've always had a knack for technology and uh, that sort of has always been a hobby of mine. And then I want to ask you question, this question, then Lucas, and then, I'll, then Savannah will get That's some cool. more time. I can just sit here and look pretty. Dream job. Dream so job. Well, okay, so 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 okay. your your undergrad, you both both under. Pilfering one of my questions. Am I? Am I? Okay. Kind of. It's okay. adjacent though. Okay. Uh, your undergrad now. Yeah. Uh, is there is there grad school in your future? Do you feel that's necessary? Do you is that something you want to pursue? I think so. Entrepreneurship is uh, is something that's been in the back of my head for a while as well. So. Okay, so, or something. so when I say dream job, it could uh, understand the, the you know, could so be just, working just for yourself. To piggyback, so dream not... thing after academia or you stay in academia, what's your, what do you think at this point? That's a tough question you're asking. And you'll me. be able to review this video in 10 years. Oh boy. So they give us your five year plan <laughs> yeah. and then we'll have you back on the cube at SC 2027. What's the dream? There's people out here watching this and I go, hey, internship. So as I mentioned, entrepreneurship, I'm thinking I'll start a company at some point. Okay. Yeah. Hell in yes. what? I don't know yet, we'll see. Lucas, any thoughts? Um, so after graduation, I am planning to go to grad school. IU has a great accelerated master's degree program, so uh, I'll stay an extra year and get my master's. Um, dream job is, uh, boy, that's in impossible to answer, but um, <laughs> I, I remember telling my dad earlier this year that um, I was so, so interested in what NASA was doing. They're sending a probe um, to, to one of the moons of Jupiter, so. That's awesome, just, that's awesome. From a parent's so perspective, the dream often is, let's get the kids off the payroll. So I'm sure that your families are happy to hear that you have. Uh, I think these two will be all right. Yeah, I think they're going to be okay. Department. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I was curious, I want to piggyback on that because I think what NASA is doing amazing, we had them on the show, who doesn't love space? Yeah. I'm also an entrepreneur though, so I very much uh, empathize with that. I was, I was going to ask to your dream job, but also what, what companies here do you find the most impressive? I'll rephrase, because I was going to say, who would you want to work with? Yeah, anything you think is interesting. But, but yeah, what's, what, have you even had a chance to walk the floor? I know you've been busy competing. Very little. You, uh, yeah, I was going to say very little. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to roam around very much, but I look around and I see names that I'm like, I can't even, you know, it's crazy to see them. Like, these are people who are so impressive in the space. These are people who are extremely smart. I'm surrounded by geniuses everywhere I look, I feel like, so. Um, that, that includes I, us. Yeah, I, I, he wasn't <laughs> talking about us. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard to say any of these companies. I would feel very, very lucky to be a part of. I think. Well, there's a reason why both of you were invited to the party. So keep that keep keep that in mind. Yeah, but so so not a lot of time because of yeah. because Tomorrow's you're here, our day. Here, here to get work. Oh yes, tomorrow yeah. you get to play and go mm -hmm. talk to everybody. Yes, and mm -hmm. let them recruit you because I'm sure that's what a lot of exactly. these companies are going to be doing. Well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, it's plan. Have you had a second at all to look around, Carl? A little bit more. I've been going to the bathroom once in a while. Yeah. Um, that's allowed. I mean, I can imagine yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a vital part so of the I've been, I've been, you know, averting my gaze a little bit to, uh, to what's around. Um, all kinds of stuff. Higher education seems to be very important uh, in terms of their, their presence here. Uh, I find that very, very impressive. You know, Purdue has a big stand, IU as well, but also others, you know, all from Europe as well and, uh, and Asia. Um, I think uh, higher education has a lot of potential in this field. Absolutely. And it, it really is that union between academia and the private yeah. sector. We've seen a lot of it, but also, you know, one of the things that's cool about HPC is it's really not ageist. It hasn't been around for that long. So, I mean, at, well, at this scale, it's obviously this show has been going on since 1988, before you guys were even probably a thought. But I think uh, it's, it's interesting. It's so fun to get to meet you both. Thank you for sharing about what you're doing and what your dreams are. Lucas and Carl, I, I Thanks hope- Thanks for taking the time. I hope you win. And we're going to get you off the show here uh, as quickly as possible so you can get back to your teams and back to competing. David, great questions as always. Thanks for being here. And thank you all for tuning in to theCUBE live from Dallas, Texas, where we are at Supercomputing. My name is Savannah Peterson, and I hope you're having a beautiful day.